This looks like one of my games of Oregon Trail, with everyone freezing and dying of dysentery. Did you play Red Dead Redemption? If not, I highly recommend you do. What about Call of Juarez? If not, I highly recommend you play Red Dead Redemption. Western games have proven difficult to make, but now we have Red Dead Redemption 2, and if you haven't played it already, I highly recommend you play Red Dead Redemption. It's superior in every way to its sequel, because Rockstar was more interested in simulating horse testicles shrinking in the cold and creating a focused plot. We are gonna ride out, and we are gonna find some food. Everybody, we're safe. Dutch is quite possibly the worst gang leader ever, like an evil version of Mal from Firefly. The game begins in the aftermath of another of his failures, and will continue through half a dozen more before the end. How he ever inspired this many people to follow him and show such loyalty is beyond me. Must be those over-punctuated speeches he gives. What really went down back there on that boat? We missed you. That's what happened. I too would also like the details of what happened in Blackwater that forced you to flee into the mountains. Maddeningly, the game will never give us a clear picture of just what it was all about despite constantly referencing it. This game pairs one of the most detailed and beautiful open world games with a third and first person shooting mechanics of a PlayStation 2 game. It's a cover shooter that requires auto aim to hit anything. It feels like I'm the enemy in a light gun arcade game popping up from cover to shoot the player. And while I'm on the subject of the game's piss poor controls, could someone have a word with Rockstar over their incessant belief that people accelerate like cars? Having to mash the X button to run is maddening. And made all the worse by how you constantly overshoot your destination. Go ahead, viewer. Call me pedantic, but I'm willing to wager you more than once lost your cool as you were trying to raid a cupboard, only to keep shooting past the contact sensitivity prompt as you tried to steer Arthur around a living room like he was a tractor trailer pulling up to a loading bay. He's got himself caught into a scrape again. He ain't been seen in two... two days. Your John will be fine. You had people die in that snowstorm and even claimed the storm was so bad that it would keep Pinkertons from following you. So yes, John being lost in it for two days could very well mean he is dying. If the situation were reversed, he'd look for me. It's always so adorable when prequel characters get to wink at the audience with a line that ironically references what will happen in the future. John made camp here, then traveled further up the mountain like he expected to find the gang camping at the summit. That's quite a scratch you got there. The problem with finally revealing the origins of scars is that it takes all the mystery out of it. How John got his facial scars was never as important as him having them. Now we know he was just attacked by some wolves and then rescued by others. Well, we can't go back the way we came. Let's try this way. We can't take the harder path we used to get here, so let's take this much easier path right next to us that leads back to where we started anyway. We're gonna need to come up with a better story for that scar. This is what I imagine the devs told themselves during the development of both games, but couldn't come up with anything interesting enough in the first game and figured it was better left unexplained, then went ahead and gave it another shot here in the sequel, and proved themselves right the first time. And the last thing we need is to get bushwhacked by Colm O'Driscoll. Let's go. I know you hate him, Dutch. He's here for us. I doubt that. No, you're just doubting me. The O'Driscolls are here on the mountain to rob a train. You learned that when Arthur questioned one of them. They don't even know you were up here. This game is more interested in showing off and immersing you in the experience that it forgets that frustration will bring you right out of that immersion. The time it takes to loot a body or room got so annoying that after the first few hours I stopped looting, because ironically, collecting my ill-gotten spoils was more labor-inducing than killing those guarding the goods. Go ahead. Set up the detonator by those rocks over there. FYI, don't attach the wire to the detonator while Bill is still setting up the dynamite under the bridge. Arthur and Lenny already made their way through the train killing all the guards. Yet after the train has stopped, more guards appear from inside. I'm going to head into the local town and, uh, you know, see if I can strike up a little business. Strauss is in charge of the gang's loan sharking operation. The thing about money lending, you have to have money to loan out first. Something the gang is currently without after they were chased out of Blackwater. That was why they needed to rob the train of bear bonds, which they haven't sold yet. If Strauss had money, they could have left the mountain a lot sooner. We are safe. We make a bit of money here. Then we move again, head out around them, be west of Uncle Sam, in a few months, buy some land. Over the years, I've noticed that Rockstar has a tendency to shy away from an overarching plot that gives direction and purpose in favor of multiple plot threads that start, reach no conclusion, then are brought up again hours later after you've forgotten about them, before trying to tie them all together in the last act of the game by anticlimactically killing every antagonist. We need food. Real food. That means every day. One of you. And remember, whatever it is that you find, the camp gets its slice. Simulation can be fun in a game, but only to a point. Introduce too much micromanagement, and you enter into the realm of games that appeal only to middle-aged Germans who dreamed of running a shipping company. And Rockstar has a bad habit of forcing stat management into their releases. See all the BS you had to do in San Andreas, going to class in Bully, and managing your social life in GTA 4. 
I can keep Arthur alive on a diet of cigarettes and hard liquor. I can even have him bathe on the occasion when I remember. This is sounding a bit too close to reality already, but forcing me to take care of my horse in camp to the same degree is where this game starts to feel more like parenting with the amount of mouths I have to feed. At times, it feels like Rockstar would much prefer to be writing novels while sipping wine in its villa on the coast of the Mediterranean, casting snide looks at players when they selfishly try to have fun inside the story missions. That's why you spend a good chunk of this game staring at a horse's ass and listening to two characters debate the meaning of life and the struggle of man. The game helpfully tries to alleviate this by playing itself for you. Just hold down X or switch to the cinematic camera, then go make a sandwich while you travel to your destination. Red Dead 2 borrows the witness system that Mafia 3 used and all the problems that came with it. If an NPC witnesses you commit a crime, you have to stop them before they alert the law. But while threatening to pull off their fingernails, other NPCs will witness your new crime and also alert the law, meaning you have a cascading shit failure of a system that you are better off ignoring if there is more than one NPC anywhere near you. Bill gets in a fight in the saloon and Javier starts throwing punches at people sitting at a completely different table and had nothing to do with the guy Bill punched. While this train likely couldn't stop in time, the conductor would still apply the brakes and blow the horn after seeing someone on the tracks. You've held Karen O'Driscoll captive for weeks. When Arthur grabbed him on the mountain, Dutch intended to starve him until he talked. After a time that is far longer than a human can go without food, they just mock torture him by threatening to hot cut his balls and he spills. It takes roughly 20 seconds for all animals to relieve themselves, except for humans in video games who can pee continuously while someone sneaks up on them. This O'Driscoll is shot by Karen, however the shot came from above and to the right indicated by the bullet trail, while Kieran is on the same level if not a little below Arthur, and is also in front of them. You take that kid into town. Valentine, not strawberry. Get him drunk. One of your men is sentenced to hang and you order Arthur to get Lenny drunk in town before rescuing Micah, possibly getting the two of them arrested as well? And getting arrested is exactly what can happen. How has no one ever broken out of this jail before when there is a steam winch on the other side of the jail wall? So how can Micah and Arthur shoot up this entire town and not be wanted here as much as they are back in Blackwater? Strauss gives Arthur the name of people who are past due on their debt, while giving out their names his ledger is open to the last page. One camera cut later and his ledger is now open to the first page. Also. Strauss went into town to give out loans just a few days ago. Is debt really expected just a few days after the loan? Downs coughing blood on Arthur ends up being a much bigger deal later, but it won't be until much later in the game that it comes up. And good on this game for not making it super obvious right away. Sell your place. We already owe more than it's worth. <coughs> if your home was already leveraged that heavily on top of what you owed Strauss, then there should have been other debt collectors coming to collect. Using a profanity filter to keep the player from naming their horse after their genitals is only inviting them to get creative when it comes to naming. That's why I ended up with a stallion named My Horse Cox. Sean is being moved up the upper Montana, then to a federal prison out west. I'm moving him to a camp nearby before handing him over to the government. Was his jail cell not good enough to hold him until the feds got here to take him away? The camp is just right outside the town after all. Also, get used to rescue missions in this game, since this is the third one in just the first few hours. You know, stopping a train, pain in the ass. Sure, but what if we could force a train to stop? Yeah, what if that were possible? Like, what if we had done exactly that not too long ago? I reckon we're a lot alike, you and me. We're a lot alike, you and me, cliche. Would you do something with Jack? He seems kind of down. All this upheaval can't have been easy on the poor kid. Shouldn't you be asking John, the kid's father, to take him fishing? Arthur Morgan, Vanderlyn's most trusted associate. You've read the files. Typical case. Orphaned street kid seduced by that maniac's silver tongue and matures into a degenerate murderer. Authorities make for the best and most efficient way of narrating a main character's backstory. Agent Milton. Agent Ross. Agent Ross first met Jack while Jack was fishing by a river, and years from now, Jack will kill Ross as he fishes by a river. Prequels make such poetry easy. We want Vanderlyn. If you want Dutch, you literally just have to walk up the path behind you. The camp is right up there. And if you can locate Arthur, I assume you can find that. Good day, Mr. Morgan. Goodbye. Arthur pretty clearly turned down your offer. Shouldn't you either kill or arrest him? Enjoy your fishing, kid. Why you still can. That is Ross's only line in the game, and it serves no purpose other than to make his own death years from now more ironic. Maybe don't practice shooting when you are this bad at it by aiming in the direction of the oil tank. Maybe give the train a bit more time to see you? It's going to come around that bin and have only seconds before hitting the oil tank. In fact, I don't think there's enough time for the train to stop. I cannot think of another game that even comes close to how well this game frames its cutscenes. Uh, you know, that attempt to seem all enigmatic and interesting. That might work for Dutch, but for you, it just makes you look stupid. He's got to learn to be a main character sometime, Arthur. This ain't the right time for you to be learning how to hurt. Yeah, Marston, you don't learn that until the next game. It's odd that they want to make sure this doesn't create a plot hole, but allow others to slip by. My name is Leviticus Cornwall. I am not a man to be messed with. <laughs>
Cornwall calls Dutch out at the saloon, but then runs off right before Dutch comes out to talk. This is done so you can't shoot him when you rescue John and Strauss. Sadie, remaining with the gang after they rescued her from O'Driscoll's men back on the mountain makes little sense. She was never a criminal. And while grateful for being saved, has no reason to stick around. While on a fishing trip, Dutch and Arthur come across Trelawney locked in a paddy wagon. Dutch chats up the sheriff like he knows an opportunity will present itself with one of the other men in the wagon picking the lock. And the criminal starts picking the lock right in front of Arthur like he knew Arthur wouldn't say anything about it. Stay with that train! All you had to do was follow the damn train, Arthur. Chase scenes in and meet lockers way too often. Somehow this one even did it on a train. This must have happened recently. I think the body on the ground is better proof of it happening recently than a wrecked carriage. But most of it is a... a glance or a word. And after that, a visit in the night. Out west is... Out west is out west. Arthur is somehow completely ignorant of race relations in the U.S. only a few decades removed from the Civil War. Been cooking since horseshoe. But you went and kicked up all that commotion in Valentine. Now, we was preparing to rob the bank there until you got involved in all that nonsense and- All of the more reason to not go back there. You shot up the town so badly you had to move camp to another state. How's it going in there? Too slowly! Suddenly I'm getting payday flashbacks. Back in these days, train schedules always lined up perfectly with getaways. The total take from this job was $15,000, an amount that would allow the gang to leave the country like Dutch wants. But he will still insist on making more money. I don't care if you kill the whole lot of us. And the Braithwaite's. I don't want to kill anyone. I love her, you know. The Braithwaite's and the Greys are two rival plantation families who are at each other's throats. So how did Beau and Penelope ever meet and fall in love in the Romeo and Juliet knockoff storyline? Women's suffrage. Boo wrote Penelope a love letter and Penelope responded by sending him a letter about the suffrage movement and her plans to attend the rally. How romantic. What do you sell that stuff for? Dollar a bottle. You give us 50 cents. It's already ours. Well, look on it as a reward for finding the property. It's a brave move to sell the moonshine you stole from the Braithwaite's back to them and expect it to work. Hell, not only does it work, she then has them give the shine away for free in town. Gentlemen! My name is Melvin. That's my brother Fenton. He's a bit funny, but boy, can he pour drinks fast. Why do you need the act anyways? You're giving the shine away for free. For the next 30 minutes, the drinks in this year bar, in this year town, are entirely free! Arthur must have lost track of time, because day changes to night in that 30 minutes. Act 3 of this game is pretty light on plot, but that gives you more time to appreciate the random events that occur while traveling. I once came across a clan meeting where they accidentally set fire to themselves, and right after that I encountered a portal to hell in the road that lit passing horses and carriages on fire. I know part of this is due to the problems of scale when it comes to open worlds, but this farm Arthur sells a stolen Braith Wraith horses to is right down the road from their ranch. So what are you? Cuban? No, I don't like Cubans. That is some awfully specific racism. There were only two bounty hunters holding Trelawney. Yet when they run into the cornfields, you have to capture three men. The rivalry plotline between the plantations is fine and even has well-written characters. But damn it, this goes anywhere. Colm O'Driscoll sets up a parlay with Dutch to bring an end to their conflict. But it's really a trap to abduct Arthur so he can lead Dutch on a rescue mission where Colm will sit the law on them. However, after his men knock out Arthur who is on overwatch for the meeting, Colm could have taken out or captured Dutch and been done with it right there. <laughs> Arthur survives a point-blank shotgun round. Yeah, it was aimed at his shoulder, but that would still destroy his arm and leave him bleeding to death. Turns out that if you want to keep someone held captive, it's beneficial to tie their hands even if you hang them upside down. Also, you shouldn't leave files within their arm's reach. Arthur's escape is made so easy I kept expecting a sympathizer in O'Driscoll's gang to appear and explain that they were helping him get away. Well, you cauterized the wound but failed to remove the slug still embedded in your shoulder. While I don't fault the game for having the Greys and Braithwaite's find out that the gang was robbing them both while pretending to work for them, no reason is ever given for how both families discovered the truth at the same time. Why'd you take the boy, Mrs. Braithwaite? You stole Boys my Boys are liquor. off limits. You stole my horses. So in return, you took a young boy from them and gave him to a mobster in San Denis? I can see why you felt that made you square. My sons gave him to Angelo Bronte. So my guess is Saint Denis. You would think that John would have mentioned back in the first game that it wasn't his son's first time being kidnapped. And when I return, I'll be with 50 men. All of you will die. All you did was give the gang advance notice that you were coming with 50 men and they need to break camp. The smart move would have been to wait until the rest of the Pinkertons had arrived, make the deal, and then immediately arrest or kill them if declined. Dutch keeps talking about leaving for Australia or Tahiti, but Mexico isn't far from where you currently are if you just need to leave the country. He's a man of vision. Poor vision, but vision nonetheless. Stick him up, cowboy. Funny joke, Dutch. You even pulled the hammer back and had your finger on the trigger for effect. Entertainment seems to think child thieves are more interested in playing cat and mouse and getting away with their haul, inevitably leading their mark back to their hideout. Qui sont ces bouffons? 
sono qui per picciotto. Coi soldi? You do know that the term spaghetti western wasn't meant to be literal. You, you, you twist words, you lie shamelessly, you think you are better than everyone else. Ti adoro. <laughs> Date da bere sti uomini. <laughs> You're a criminal like me. Let's be friends. Forgive me for not picking up on that sooner. You perform a simple job for me, and you get your son back. Of course, this is an open world game after all. So far, Dutch has been screwed over by everyone he's tried to scam or negotiate with, yet he expects Bronte to be a trustworthy business partner. Mr. Bronte has invited us to a garden party at the mayor's house. <laughs> Bronte plans to tip off Dutch about a robbery he can pull, but it's actually a trap to get him killed. That's something he could have done at any time. There's no need to invite Dutch and crew to the mayor's ball just to share that info. See that wretch? He's the mayor. Oh, and that one too. That is Alberto Fusar. He owns a sugar plantation out on the island and the Redskins. <laughs> I have no sympathy for them. Meet all the people you'll be doing missions for or killing for the next few hours of the game. All the important information is in the middle of the book cliche. What did you find now? There's plenty of money moves through here, of course, and I, I think I found out how we can grab some of it. A big bank. Real one, I mean. You needed to go to the ball to figure out that the city bank would have a lot of money in it? I can see why they consider Hosea the brains of this operation. Experienced gunman Arthur didn't notice the second gun this guy was carrying. Well, that expensive pocket watch Arthur stole is suddenly worth a lot less due to water damage. Also, Strauss is an old man and I highly doubt he could swim that distance back to shore. That money is bone dry after being soaked in a river. This is Rain's Fall, a great chief, and his son, Eagle Flats. Gentlemen, yeah, we saw you in the wagon train crossing the river at Cumberland Falls. You were on top of a mountain looking down at them back then. No way could you see his face clearly enough at that distance to remember Arthur. It was night just a moment ago when Dutch and Arthur were on the porch. One walk through the house to the second floor and it's day. We've been doing well, making money, but for us all to leave together, we need enough for a boat. By this point, you have thousands of dollars in the gang's coffers, which would be hundreds of thousands in today's money. How much can it cost to charter a boat somewhere for 20 people? We made a bit of money on that riverboat job, but not enough for us to leave and live peacefully. Where's the rest coming from? In there. How does Dutch figure that a trolley station is going to have more cash on hand than a riverboat casino? Saint Denis is way bigger than Blackwater, and Dutch and Arthur shoot their way out of the city through the police force. Yet they still don't become as wanted or pursued from this act as they were for their botched robbery back in Blackwater. It ain't about revenge, Hosea. Angelo Bronte don't mean shit to me. This is about the fact we are planning to rob a bank in his town. A bank that he no doubt protects. A town where his men are gunning for us. Getting rid of Bronte doesn't mean the police won't try and stop you. Plus, I need to check the traps. Would you come with me? Of course. Could you maybe give them some waiters instead of making them walk through a swamp in their clothes? <laughs> How do you go about capturing the villain without making him look like too much of a bitch? Just have his gun jam without ever firing a shot. That way, it looks like he at least tried to put up a fight. Even after shooting up the town in a botched robbery, robbing the casino, and even shooting at Bronte's mansion, the gang is still planning to rob the San Denis Bank. This bank keeps the vault in the lobby for easy robbing convenience. We lost John. Killed? Arrested. I couldn't help. John is captured during the bank heist, and back in Red Dead 1, John claimed to have left the gang after being left behind by Dutch during a bank robbery. This gets retconned in this game, because John returns to the gang later and only leaves after a train heist goes bad. Somehow the Pinkertons never realized that the gang escaped to the rooftops and hid in an attic not far away from the bank even though there was a ladder right outside the hole in the wall they blew in the bank. This whole town is filled with cops. How is this any worse than when you, Arthur, and Lenny shot your way out of this city a day ago? I'll deal with them. What? How? I can't kill all of them silently, so when they chase me, you go the other way. Charles not only serves as a distraction so the rest of the gang can sneak on board the ship, but he actually escapes the city on foot and has a much easier time than the rest, meaning they all would have been better off following Charles' lead instead of sneaking on board. That cloud looked like good news to you. How much does God hate these people? I don't even see any rain. What caused the ship to catch fire and sink? If you fall unconscious underwater, you will drown if someone else doesn't rescue you. You do not wash up completely fine on a beach the next day. This is turning into more Robinson Crusoe than Sergio Leone. Not only did Arthur survive a near drowning, he also washed up on the same island Dutch and the rest landed on after washing ashore on this island. Dutch and the gang are arrested by the corrupt governor, then are rescued and recruited by the resistance who tell them to capture enemy bases. I feel like I left that great western I was just playing and started on a Far Cry game. Apparently chairs are built with an escape function in case you're tied to one. The gold. A key. You didn't need to hire the old woman to guide you through a cave. It was a straight line after all. You killed her. She was gonna betray us, Arthur. Are you not going to take back that gold bar you paid her with now that you killed her? Even though I really like this game, 
Chapter 5 feels pretty pointless. It's the shortest chapter, taking place almost entirely on Guarma, and only serving as a time sink for things to unfold on the mainland. I found a boat for you. And he should be arriving on the dock any time now. Just before the naval attack started on the fork, you claimed that until the governor was dealt with, you couldn't get them a boat. Then right after it's over, you found a boat when you certainly didn't have enough time since you were defending the fort with the gang. A Cuban standoff? Well, I guess it's close to Mexico. Kicking the rifle to the captain and letting him shoot the governor's man is a lot more work than you shooting him yourself. Head back to Blackwater. No. Why not? Because... The last thing they'll be thinking is for us to turn up. So you can't go back to Blackwater and get the money stash there because you're wanted men? But you can go back to Saint Denis where you were wanted men because that's the one place they won't expect you to show up? The same logic can be applied to Blackwater, which was months ago by this point. We've gone to visit relatives. From my daddy's side, you are not yet acquainted with them. In Le Cay, a small village just north of Saint Denis. Sadie's letter would fool no one who came to the old camp looking for the gang. Jen Milton with the Pinkerton Detective! The repeated failures of the Pinkertons to capture Dutch's gang even when they had the drop on them does not reflect well on their organization. Arthur should teach John that trick. Might save his life one day. John. He's in jail. Well, we'll get him. Abigail, just not, not yet. There's talk of hanging him. It's not gonna come to that. Dutch went to war over Jack being taken. John, not so much. Please, do something. We will. Game should have been called Red Dead Rescue given the amount of missions focused on getting people out of prison. What is it? Not good news. Well, I guess that. You got tuberculosis. Tuberculosis takes months to years to begin showing symptoms. Arthur was only infected with it a few weeks ago and reaches the end stage of the disease within a few weeks of his diagnosis. Thanks for smoking right next to your patient with a lung disease. Unless you knew what the wind direction would be, and given the era this is in, you couldn't. There was no way to know if the hot air balloon would drift over the prison John is being held in so you can reconnoiter it. It takes the prison guards far too long to notice the hot air balloon hovering just over the yard. Though Driscoll's chasing Sadie can hit the balloon operator, but not put around into the balloon itself. Also, you can't steer a balloon this accurately down a tree-lined road. Arthur displays the impressive ability of swallowing his entire fist. Arthur, do you have my bag? Dutch's growing anxiety and paranoia that drive him away from his morals and ideals is so well done in this game that I had to take a sin off for how believable it is. This country in Roanoke Ridge past Butcher Creek, I believe we could hold. Go take over a cave controlled by a gang of cannibals and turn it into our new home. There had to be a better place. One thing I have to congratulate the game on is a subtle change to mission rewards here in Chapter 5. When Arthur does something good, he now has the option of turning down the reward. You don't have to turn it down, but here in the final chapter, with Arthur facing his own death due to illness and reflecting on his life, turning down the reward shows that money is no longer important to him, and he's even confronted by the widow of the man who infected him with TB, now working as a prostitute in a coal town all because he collected debt from her husband. It's notable that from this point, debt collection missions for Strauss all have the option of absolving the debt instead of collecting, and you can even kick Strauss out of the gang. Arthur went over to search the body of the other prison guard while Sadie questioned this one about John, meaning both of them were in the open and could be seen by this third guard, but somehow Arthur gets the drop on him. There was nothing stopping you from continuing to use the guard as a hostage once John was brought out. You could have held him at gunpoint until you wrench the boat and even all the way to the other side of the river. When Spring and John brings the law down on all of us, what then? Does that actually change the current situation? The law is already looking for you and has been the entire game. Micah reckons there's a rat. Oh, does he? Micah is the rat, so probably not the best idea to start raising that suspicion in the gang. This better not be no stupid revenge mission, Dutch. Or another goddamn rescue mission. There's a lot of missions I don't like, Dutch. Give me this ship, $10,000, and safe passage out of here. I'll let you live. <laughs> I'll do no such thing! <laughs> you sure? Good. I prefer it this way. The other day you got onto Arthur for springing John from prison due to the attention it would bring. How does killing Cornwall not do the exact same thing? Dutch has been talking about getting a boat and sailing away. He even offered to stop robbing from Cornwall for his boat. Now with a ship right in front of them for the stealing, they run the other way. It looks like Mr. Cornwall's company has signed a railroad contract with the army. Any plans Cornwall's company had might very well be canceled with his death and the stealing of these documents, or at the very least become far more guarded. Would you talk to him? Speak with Rangeful. Yes. Would you? This choice should read, do you want the game to run another two hours on top of what you already still have left? Because the Native American plot line is slow. Did you have fun with my son, the impetuous prince? I believe you went on a raid with him. The first time you met Arthur, you hired him to steal documents from an oil refinery with your son. You can't exactly fault your son for then using the same tactic for stealing back the tribe's horses. <coughs> you okay, man? 
Someone. Jackson, take him away. Arthur's illness has perfect timing when it comes to plot significant moments. I suppose boarding a train without a ticket isn't much of a crime compared to deserting the army. Today is the day they are going to hang Colm O'Driscoll. After all the buildup of the rivalry between these two gangs, Colm O'Driscoll is captured by the authorities off screen and sentenced to hang without the player having had any hand in his capture. I would say that the O'Driscoll gang's plan to rescue their boss by shooting their way out of the city is flawed, but we've seen Dutch and his gang pull it off more than once. And in fact, do it again here. As I mentioned earlier, you can tell when you are coming to the end of a Rockstar game by how many villains are unceremoniously killed. Just how many storylines does one game need? We have Dutch losing it, John being set up for main character status, Arthur dying of tuberculosis, the army and the Native Americans, the Pinkertons and now even Sadie needs further closure to her story with the O'Driscolls even though she watched Colm hang. We've seen a train stop in seconds for an oil cart sitting on the tracks. This one can't do the same for two men in a handcart on the bridge. Dutch needed the natives to attack the oil field so he could get the state bonds inside the office there. But Eagle Flies decided to attack the oil field all on his own while Dutch was waiting around to camp. Had Eagle Flies been dissuaded by his father or died earlier, Dutch's plan would have gone up in smoke. This oil field is the same one Arthur stole reports from for Rainsfall earlier. The state bonds are even being held in the same office as the reports were. If Dutch wanted the state bonds, he could have just sent Arthur here on a stealth mission to get them. We are nearly there. Arthur, we're nearly there. With a single $500 bond, you've had way bigger hauls than this. One more big score, we got enough money to leave. The one thing the Dutch has never clarified is just how much money they need to leave the country. You would think people would have asked him about that. Just one more That's train. always a goddamn train. You're telling me. I think this makes the fourth train robbery or mission regarding trains that the game has thrown at me. This train is speeding towards the bridge Arthur and John blew up earlier. And the army knows that the bridge is destroyed, but this train was on track for it anyways. John is shot and left for dead during the train job, which flies in the face of the first game where it was mentioned that it was a bank heist that made John leave the gang. The driver's dead! This thing ain't stopping! We got to get off! He died with no explanation, since none of the gang ever went to the front of the train. Also, it is very easy to stop the train with a handbrake. Arthur did it back on the mountain. Guess which mission Arthur dies during. Maybe the one that shares the name with the game. We hid, but they took Abigail! Who did? Agent Milton and his men took it to Van Horn! Pinkertons raided the camp while the gang was gone and took Abigail. When you consider that Micah is their mole, they should have been waiting near the station in the city they controlled to ambush the gang there. I think you should cover me and I'll go in there and get her. It wasn't that long ago that I did this exact same sniping mission in this same place with Bill to steal dynamite. I suppose in a game this long, you have to start recycling missions at some point. Micah Bell. We picked him up when you boys came back from the Caribbean. And he's been a good boy ever since. If Micah was feeding you information ever since he came back from Guarma, then you did a bad job of making use of it. He knew where the camp was, all of Dutch's plans, and you didn't act on any of that information. It all makes sense now. No, it damn well doesn't. I agree. I can't really see what Micah has been trying to accomplish with his actions. He comes across as both loyal and manipulative of Dutch, since he wasn't planning on abandoning Dutch here to the Pinkertons, but was also the one egging Dutch on into stupid plans while leaking those plans of Pinkerton, but also expecting to get away with a haul each time. No! My pre-order horse! You bastards! You're my brother. I'll remember you, Arthur. I'll definitely mention you in my own game someday. Rather than get the gang's money hidden in the cave, or, you know, escape, Micah followed Arthur and John to the top of the mountain just to kill them. I would have been taking Sens off for this incredible finale with Arthur dying on the mountain after redeeming himself. You know, the act the game is named after. Except this isn't the ending. Instead, we have a five-hour epilogue of John Marston learning to be a rancher, a father, and husband while building his home. Why is it so hard to live somewhere else? You have a price on your head here. I'm a good worker. My wife, Agatha, even our boy. Am I the only one that recalls that John mentioned back in the first game that he had a little girl who died young? She should have been alive at some point during this game, but there's no mention of her. Not even a line about how sad they are over losing their little girl. Mind if I enjoy one of these apples? I already looked like an asshole, but hey, every little bit helps to sell my one and only character trait. I didn't need to know how John became a rancher and built a home. I already knew that it took place, and it's so mundane I could fill in the details myself. I have not encountered a more unnecessary epilogue since Frodo had to retake the Shire from Sauron. This feels like the opening of a David Cage game. What a great visual metaphor for the future of this game. I find myself in a strange situation. Normally I loathe when content is cut from a game to be sold as DLC. But DLC is exactly what this feels like. A bonus campaign to play after finishing the game. Get off that man! Get off him! Stop acting like a goddamn storybook hero, will ya? What choice did I have? Plenty, you moron! Why won't you let people walk all over you, John? I just want a normal life. All three of them are eating the same meal, but using different utensils. Bank loans? I got a goddamn price on my head, woman! I know! I know all about that! Every time we about to get somewhere, make something, you go and show the entire world that you ain't Jimmy Milton! What exactly were you expecting when you fell in love with a wanted man? He can't make himself unwanted. 
Well, we got followed, and then... We... Followed by who? Uh, probably someone who knew me. If we didn't get to them particulars, I'm sorry. My son. Our son! It's not as if he's going out looking for trouble. All John is doing is defending himself from being killed. We got a son. I got a son. And I love our son enough that I can't have him around while you're like this. I mean, we could just move to a less shitty part of the country where people won't try to kill us, but I figured it's easier to leave you. Look at all these weeks where John didn't get into any trouble after Abigail left with Jack. Sadie opens up a rather big plot hole in the first game. John is eventually tasked with hunting down the surviving members of Dutch's gang, and Sadie was a member, even led it during Dutch's absence, yet she is never targeted by the feds. What? Where are we headed? Strawberry! Got on the run from New York. This is the first of several bounty hunting missions John will go on with Sadie. None save the very last will matter. John starts running into several former members of the gang inside the territory they're all wanted men in. Where are we headed? West. West? Oh god, I ain't even man a few words. I can see we're headed west. You know, speaking in monosyllables don't make you seem interesting, it makes you seem stupid. I think Uncle just wrote a new way of sending the pronoun game that I'm considering adopting. How the hell do you have a two-part epilogue? Be honest. This is chapter seven and eight. A fella came by the farm. Got attacked on the road. He said the Skinner brothers was hanging around. They are still introducing new villains, even at this point in the game. Who are these two? Guns for hire. They're Skinner's about, we need them. You are former outlaws though. What are two hired bodyguards going to do that the two of you can't? The Skinner's attack John to steal his new tools, though they ambush him just up the road from the blacksmith, who lives alone and would make a far better target. That is the most useless nail ever hammered. That is the start of a roof tiling job that is going to have to be redone. The layers are not staggered correctly, and John is starting a new set of tiles in the middle of the roof. That fat man will be fine. No, he won't. Skinners. The Skinners could have taken all of you while you were passed out drunk, or burned the house down with you in it. Instead, they took Uncle to bait you into an unnecessary trap. It's gonna be okay. A few days, you're gonna be just fine. John doesn't know much about second degree burns, does he? Photos back in this time took all day to develop. This guy did it in minutes. Remember at the start of this video when I said you should play the first Red Dead Redemption instead? I think this game is now sending that same signal, because I remember doing all this family bonding, ranching, and bounty hunting in the epilogue of that game. I found him. I found Micah. It's obvious that this game wants to replicate the ending of the first game somewhat, where the secondary main character kills the man responsible for the main character's death. But repeating that twist is undermined in a couple ways. One, it's predictable. The moment Micah got away and you take control of John, it becomes obvious how it would end since Micah is not in the first game. Second, the first game's epilogue was meant to give John his life back before cruelly stealing it away again. The entire game was building towards that moment. This has been nothing but five hours of ranching and building a house, and now it expects you to care about a finale it spends all of one mission ramping up to. It all ends where it began cliché. Sadie comes in from an impossible position. Behind her is a sheer cliff. She was left back on the path after a knife injury. The only way to get to this flanking position was running right past John to Micah's shootout. We all did our best for you. Ain't our fault. Things turned out the way they did. This is what Dutch should have done back when he interrupted the fight between Arthur and Micah. John even gave Dutch the exact same speech Arthur did. Micah's death is robbed of any impact because it's simply tying up a loose end, rather than a climactic finale between two characters opposed to each other like it would have been had it not been put off for the epilogue. The end credits show Ross discovering Micah's body and then shortly thereafter finding John's ranch. However, it will be several years before they act on this information and force John to hunt down the remaining members of Dutch's old gang. 